no phone on table. I apologize to all parties who were wronged by my action of having my phone on my table. Thank you. I hope you to learn and grow. Out. I'm listening and learning. Great. Um, will you tweet? Oh my god, you have so many demands. I know. Yes. Wow, okay. Just got lost staring at the accounts, trying to decide if this should be from the horse account or from the Nancy account. Mm, yeah. Also, you mentioned my new Twitter handle before, and then we got distracted, but it is also confusing to me. And I had no regrets until I had to say my Twitter handle on that podcast that we did. And I was <laughs> like, oh shit. That was like maybe the most stammery I've ever heard you <laughs> trying to explain <laughs> your t your new Twitter handle. Ooh, I should get some spooky mix for this stream, for the spooky stream. Oh, I want spooky mix. I want candy corn in general. I have had no candy corn yet this year. Oh, really? Someone expedite me What's some going on? candy corn, please. Um, I just haven't been to a store. Spooky mix. Put that on grocery orders. I mean, I'll try. I don't know if my mom will order candy corn for me. Come on. <laughs> um... I did grocery deliveries today, um, and it was such a fun adventure to, like, open the bags, because there was some, like, order drift, you know? So it was like, oh, what did I actually end up with? I got some, some special surprise treats for me, like mm. a frozen pizza I didn't order, and some Ooh. chips, and some granola bars. Nice. Um, some people are here, even though Twitch still doesn't want to show me the chat. Oh, yes, it's showing Emily me says, the chat. get Joey some candy corn. Stat. Lid said hello. Some other people said hello, but Lid. I missed it. Mm. Come on. I'm going to grab the spooky next. Oh, that's why. It's because I'm not, I'm signed into the wrong Twitch account. Cool. Can't believe this. Cool. Do you hear it? I sure do. Spooky. Oh, there we go. Okay. Francis is here and says we are ghosts. Emily says chat full of ghosts tonight. Um... Lids finally gets to be here because they're taking a mental health day. That's great. Yeah, thrilled about both of those things. Um, hi. How is everyone? Um, unless thinking about that stresses you out and then don't think about it. <laughs> mm. Um, mood. I am eating... Weird little combo of snacks. Uh, what you eating? Well, I have the very last of my Cool Ranch Doritos that I still hadn't finished. So, those. I have a beef jerky stick. Okay. Like the round kind, but like some like organic brand that like my mom ordered from Vitacost or something. Beef jerky is not a thing I usually eat in the confines of my own home. Mm. Um, like, beef jerky is very much road trip, camping, and when I used to work at a farm, I would keep beef jerky in my pockets because I would work really hard and get really hungry throughout the day, and yeah. wouldn't want to, like, walk all the way back to the house to get food. I always get really hungry throughout the day, which is why I That's like true. to eat beef jerky, but I prefer 
like teriyaki beef jerky or oh, like teriyaki something beef jerky is it, i know gross, but you, you but don't good. have to okay no i like it it's okay. just also gross you know uh, okay um i like that brand crave has some like uh i'm trying to remember they have like a citrus garlic beef jerky and like a lemon basil beef jerky or some i don't know but they're they have a little more sweetness this one does not have enough sweetness to it it is very peppery and not very sweet and it's a little intense for me i do like the peppery TBH. jerkies as well yeah i do you do you understand what i'm saying like i feel like there's lots of foods that are delicious and i enjoy eating but are gross and i don't mean that like food has a morality because it's like processed or not kind of way i mean like there's some inherent level of like yuckiness to it like i love egg salad egg salad is yucky mm, i maybe feel that way about egg salad but i don't feel that way about teriyaki beef jerky that's fair beef um, jerky is just it's very visceral because you really gotta like yeah gnaw that meat uh hmm uh, Nat is here. Francis says, I have a gin and tonic and I've decided to com commit myself to a middle part lifestyle. So I'm doing great. Oh, wow. Well. I can't wait to see what that's gonna be like. What are you drinking today, Joe? A cider. Oh, wait, I didn't finish with my snacks. I have the Doritos. I have the jerky. I also have those Trader Joe's almonds that are covered in, like, dark chocolate and sea salt and turbinado sugar. Oh, I have not had those. Those sound good. Oh. I'll send you a picture of the label because you have to try them. Yeah, that... I'm I'm intrigued. You had me at salty... at, like, sweet thing that also has flaky sea salt on it. Yeah, they're very good. Um, and I have some green tomato pickles that are very strong and delicious I but very strong struggle to conceive of a tomato pickle i mean have you ever had other vegetables that are pickled no okay well i don't know what to tell you then joey you have seen me eat other pickled vegetables <laughs> okay i thought so but i can't see your face right now and i i don't know um, no, 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 it, like, I just, tomato falls far enough outside of, like, the range of what I think of as, like, easily understandable pickled things, you know? Mm hmm What vegetables have you had pickled? Or fruits um, or whatever. Like, green beans and asparagus and okra. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I feel like the texture of this is probably not that far off from pickled green beans, but I don't know. I haven't yeah, had pickled I, green beans, so... I can see what you're saying about the texture. It's the taste that confuses me. Yeah, it doesn't really taste like anything besides the brine, but maybe yeah. I just can't tell. I actually don't know that I've eaten, like... I've had, like, tomatillos, but mm -hmm. I haven't had, like, fried green tomatoes, you know? Mm-hmm. Do you want some spooky mix? Yeah. Hmm. I am drinking a ginger jimmy tonight. What is that? Whiskey and ginger beer. Oh. I thought that was just called a whiskey ginger. Yeah. It has a name? A ginger jimmy? Yeah. I've just never heard that before. I've been drinking whiskey gingers for years and years and years, and I've never heard ginger jimmy. It might be a Midwest thing. Hmm. Ginger jimmy. Um. Ooh, just should... not... Go ahead. That does not pull up mm. anything related. Maybe that's a weird hyper-regional thing. I hadn't heard it 
referred to as such either, except, like, people called them that when I was, like, bartending in Missouri. Mm. Rose says Ginger Jimmy sounds like a character that would show up in a Nancy Drew game. Mm -hmm. Nat says the terrible man we've been missing this game. <laughs> Nat says, normally, I would never miss a terrible man, but I have a bingo card. Oh, speaking of bingo cards, we did, I wrote down, we wanted to, like, clarify something from last time, which is that you wanted to make a judgment call on bitter exes. Oh, yeah. What, um... Was my judgment call that I love the idea, but I don't think we have enough in-game evidence of bitter exes yet? I think you were actually- I think you wanted to say it was a check. I kind of lean toward the, I don't know if we have quite enough there yet, even though I like the idea. Hmm. But I'm comfortable with us going down either way, because there are no rules. Well, now I don't know. I have no idea what I was thinking. I did not write down what you were thinking, only that you said you wanted to talk about bitter exes. Hmm. Well, what does everyone in the chat think? <clears throat> Do you think Ned and the vampire count as bitter exes? Thinking about, so like, our classic um, sort of standard for bitter exes in a Nancy Drew game are, um... Katie and Jenna Deblin. Good job. Katie Firestone <laughs> and Jenna Deblin from Dangerous Deception Island. And also everyone from Midnight in Salem. Right. Yes. Um Emma says I am not unchecking for better exes. It's true and real and you need to see the truth. <laughs> Rose says I feel it in my soul. Francis says, I like the headcanon, but I'm going to say no. Yeah. That's kind of... I, I feel like there's real possibility there, but just like we... Like, similarly as we've had, like, possibility on Cursed Pet, I don't feel... I don't think that we've crossed the threshold yet. Yeah. I mean, I guess, here's the thing. They haven't... Neither of them have exhibited any actual animosity toward each other. I mean, like, I think arguably the vampire did a little bit towards Ned. I mean, maybe he was, was like, yeah, that Ned was, was kind of weird because he, you know, befriended me even though I was a weird, edgy, loner vampire and now you're here. But, like, it didn't, it didn't feel bitter the way the other bitter exes have been. I agree that they're exes, but I just, I don't think they're fraught. At least not you, yet. It feels... <laughs> It feels like more the way that many of us think of high school exes, which is not, I'm mad at this person, but like, mm, I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll update accordingly as we go. Emma, you can keep it checked, but it is an illegal check and the referees will, will yeah, consider it Yeah, you're not going to win bingo with that checked currently. <laughs> Rose says, I'll accept that they're tepid exes. Yeah. Which is also Rose's emo band. Great. <laughs> um, okay, cool. I'm glad we have uh, solidified that. Um, Check. Just I'm checking it off. A heads up um, that in like a month, it's a day that some people celebrate as Thanksgiving. And it's also Drew's Day. And we are planning on streaming that day. Um, our hope is that people will have had their meals earlier in the day and that it will be a nice um, thing to, you know, come watch the stream if you're able, um, instead of like getting, I don't know, weirdly sad after Thanksgiving dinner. Mm, yeah, 
Anyway. Don't be sad after Thanksgiving dinner. I mean, or, I don't know that I get... Whatever. I just sometimes, like, like I really love it when my family is together and we get rowdy and sometimes I kind of crash afterward and I just... And I feel like the regulating effect of a Nancy stream will be a nice thing. Yeah, I, I think... Uh, even if you enjoy the holidays with your family, it is nice to have the built-in excuse to then, like, retreat and do your own thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or maybe you yeah. don't have plans that day, and it will be nice to still have Drew's day. <sighs> oh, yeah, so. I wish we could do baby That's crew okay. Friendsgiving. Yeah. Everyone, please sign up for what you're bringing to the potluck in the chat so we can record who's bringing what for the meal. Mm-hmm. Emma predictably is rebelling against our ruling. She says, I do not accept the authority of the so-called bingo referees. That's fine. Um, oh, Lily is bringing pumpkin pie. Emily is bringing pocket turkey. Great. Appropriate. Francis, Francis is bringing bring Brussels sprouts. Fantastic. That's a classic at my family's Thanksgiving dinner. We don't do Brussels sprouts, but I'm a big fan. I just ha I had sprouts for dinner tonight. Oh, nice. Oh, Emma says she'll make cranberry bread? That sounds delicious. Intriguing. <clears throat> Rose is bringing pies. So many pies. I will also Hell bring yeah. pies and also stuffing. Mmm. What I would love Hi. someday is to have a Friendsgiving where each person just brings the version of one stuffing pie. they like best and also one oh, pie. Oh, shit. Yeah. Just oh, an all-stuffing dinner and then an all-pie dessert. Yeah, there's a there's a huge... Um, your mileage can really vary on stuffing. What is, what yeah. is your family stuffing like? Um, bread cubes, which... Are gluten free in my case. Mm -hmm. Sausage, like pork, like ground pork sausage. Mm -hmm. Um. Apples. Okay. Celery, raisins. Raisins. Yeah. And like, a lot of sage, and thyme, and probably some other stuff. Onions. There are yeah. onions in there. I know the raisins sound weird. I have very mixed feelings about raisins, and I don't like celery, and both of those things are in this stuffing, but I do love this stuffing, and it just all works. Yeah, I I feel like there's an internal logic there that tracks. I feel like I don't like raisins, even when they're supposed to work in savory things, like biryani and... Mm -hmm. um, I kind of, I you know, I... But it does it does make sense as a cohesive unit. Yeah. I mean, it's also very easy to not eat the raisins. You can just pick them out. Yeah. Now Ruby says, I will bring apple pie with slices so thin. <laughs> Nat says, no pie theory allowed. And how about potatoes? Hmm. My family stuffing, mm -hmm. thank you for asking, mm -hmm. has, um, it's similar, the aromatic bases, uh, lots of sage stuffing in particular, and the thing that, like, really makes it special is chestnuts, mm. which I love. Yeah. That sounds great. Like, I've never had, like, a chestnut stuffing, but it sounds good. Oh, so good. The chestnuts are expensive, but it's yeah. delicious. Oh, man. I'm... I'm ready now. I'm ready for that big meal. Mm-hmm. Wow, Ruby and Emma, the st stuffing haters... Is anyone is anyone a dressing household instead of stuffing? 
Like linguistically. Yeah, is that just a terminology difference or is dressing actually stuffing different? Yes, they're the same thing. Stuffing, the difference between stu- stuffing and dressing is stuffing has actually been cooked inside the bird, which we never do. So ours is technically dressing, oh. but we call it stuffing. We make both. Like, we make a big batch of stuffing, of dressing, I guess, and then some of it goes inside the bird and cooks that way, and some of it cooks in the oven. Because the, stuff, the stuffing in the bird is not nearly enough for everyone. Yeah. Yeah, well, and that can be logistically tricky because, like, st- stuffing inside the bird is the easiest way to food poison someone on Thanksgiving, unfortunately. Mm. Lily has never had stuffing. Oh. It adds, I have also never had lots of foods. Yeah. I mean, I there are many foods that other people, you know, consider like the thing they eat all the time that I have never eaten. Yeah. A recent addition to Thanksgiving for me has been cranberry sauce. Like, I was not interested in that as a earlier, and, like, my family usually had, like, canned cranberry sauce, which I'm not into. Oh, that's exactly what I I don't like anything except canned jellied cranberry sauce. I want it to come out can-shaped, and I want to slice it. Yes. Um, at Friendsgiving a few years ago, Emily made cranberry sauce. It was very good, and it's very easy. And so, mm-hmm. since then, I usually make cranberry sauce for, like, my own Thanksgiving. Thanks, nice. Emily. Mm, I, yeah, my family these days usually has three kinds of cranberry sauce. One is okay. canned jellied. Mm-hmm. One is homemade probably approximately what you're talking about um although i think growing up we would have one canned jellied and one canned like you know whole berry but the canned whole berry turned into homemade whole berry um and then we also have a fresh cranberry relish that my sister started making that is like raw cranberries oh interesting and it's less saucy and more like a little like a little slaw almost yeah that sounds that sounds interesting like what else is in it i don't know because i never eat it Hmm, that's fair i'm i cranberries are a little i don't know they're very they're tart bordering on uh, in a way that i think yeah would be bitter for you yeah exactly so like i like having a little bit of canned jellied i love Putting that then on my turkey sandwiches. Hell after... yeah. Oh god, I love a turkey sandwich with some cranberry sauce and with some mustard. Especially oh, like a stone ground mustard or Dijon. It just, it like adds a little bit and like balance, like rounds out those flavors so well. You should try it. Yeah. Okay, two things. I mean, One... I need to play this damn game. Yes. They're both short. One, because making cranberry like making cranberry sauce doesn't make a little bit it makes like a pretty decent amount and so Mm -hmm. the key is then the next day you put it out over a block of cream cheese and eat it on crackers and that's like the snack that's Mm -hmm. out all day and Mm -hmm. wah delicious and that does sound good i'm a big fan of when we do turkey sandwiches we usually like make a really like pillowy sandwich loaf and then you do like little half sandwiches which is just turkey generous butter and salt and pepper Mm. it's very simple but it kind of allows everything to shine it's very good yeah okay let's go dive into that mystery just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your (laughs) way no emily says i've messed up that sauce like every year since then i'm cursed now Wow. Francis likes homemade cranberry sauce, but is also a cranberry fan in general. Yeah. Emma says, oh no, Emily, this seems like definitely Caitlin's fault somehow. Yeah. Hmm. 
Agreed. You passed the knowledge on to me. It's my power now. Mm-hmm. Um... Interview with a vampire. Yeah, sorry, I got distracted by my Twitter notifications. Um, okay. Yes, we have to talk to the guy. Damn, you a streamer and you got notifs? Sometimes. Mmm, it's so good. Oh, it felt like for a second there it was going to boot us into a cutscene. Yeah, it's just that it's very slightly glitchy. Oh, dang. I started turning the one way and I was like, wait, no, that's wrong. That's the way I always turn. And then oh, I did no. the other way and I was wrong. Someday. Yep. Yes? Oh. <laughs> I'm going to keep looking around. Groovy. <laughs> and that's it. That was the interview with the vampire. Well, what are we supposed to do? So you made me write down everything that we have to do. So you don't even oh need the God. checklist because oh you my made God, me I'm write so it down. Oh my God, I'm so smart. Spider, puzzle. I can't read my handwriting. Spider, puzzle, redacted. Oh, buzzard feathers. Clock, skull box, marble game, crypt combo. Hey, we couldn't look at this. <gasps> oh my god! What was that? That iguana was live? He's always in here yeah, that's what I have been suspecting this whole time. That's a cursed pet. So they fit perfectly in that box. Put them back in, okay? I don't have time. I just want to look through this one book. Go right ahead. After you put all those other books back. So yes, that was a cursed pet, everyone. Check. Um, and now we have to make all these books fit. Oh, we've done this puzzle before. This box, we sure have. Um, A crystal skull, fact or fable. These do not rotate. Um,. Nat says, friend detected. Francis says, cursed? Oh, that fits nicely. Yeah. I just... <laughs> Look at this little book. Yeah. Just, a, just a baby guy. Oh. Hmm. 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 <laughs> well. <laughs> huh. Um, hmm. Emma says, small book to go in tiny mouse paws. So, So the fact that this doesn't fit crosswise here means that these books cannot be all stuck all be together there. Yeah. like that. Um,
I still not get the confirm. Okay. We'll come back to that in a sec. I just we have done this puzzle in in a game before, but this is not a puzzle I've done a lot of, and I feel like I have no clue. I don't, I don't have a system for figuring it out, like, at all. Yeah. You know? I mean, this one is very much trial and, trial and error. Oh, Tim is here. Tim Hi, says, Tim. this sure is a Nancy Drew game. It sure is. Okay, this seems bad because there's no room to put anything in that space. It does seem kind of bad. But I don't think there's going to be any room above that either. Um... That book, that curse... The Crystal Skull one is just a little bit shorter than everything else in that row, which is the yeah. same height, including the, like, the red book, which match, or the red, or the, sorry, the blue book's off to the side. The blue books are, are also a little oh, shorter. a little short. Okay. See, these are, nice. like, the same height. More similar, yeah, than the green yeah. and blue. Hmm. Um, yeah, so I really don't know. Just keep, you know, keep moving things. Just keep plunking things? Yeah. Yeah. Plunk, plunk. Ooh. Nice. <gasps> Ooh. Oh, that, that's, that's good. That's, That's great. not good. Oh, beans. Hmm. Didn't I have that fit before? No, I had this one. No, didn't I have that one too? How does this not fit anymore? Oh. That's why. It, it feels like it gives you a little too much freedom of It movement. sure does. Just enough to really confound you. Oh. Uh, we're not there yet because there's this book. Well, there's still the red one off to the side, too. Yeah, I mean, I guess if. No, that's not even enough space. Ah. <sighs> Maybe let's try. Oh, that's those... the same height as that, which is oh, good to know because it makes this, you know, a solid block. Maybe try having that solid block be the corner. But down on the ground because it won't fit next to this, I don't think. Yeah, yeah, like slide slide everything else over Just... to because we we don't Yeah, there's no reason to keep the like green and blue books set up because we don't, you know. Like that. Yeah, and then you'll probably want to slide that black book over. And this. Okay. Does that little one tuck under the other one? Sorry, that's the most... Does that orange book tuck in at the right edge of that rectangle? Oh, ho, 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 it sure does. Yeah, that's what I thought. Good work. <laughs> oh, oh, that feels great. Oh, and I think... Yeah, I just have to get 
oh, but that, mm, no, that will work. Okay, wait. Yeah, so now yeah, yeah, put yeah. those slightly these... taller ones on yes. that side. Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, God. I this love it when so a plan comes together. Beautiful. I feel like the last puzzle we did of this, they did not all fit this snugly. Like, no, I feel like there was gaps, gaps. And it was yeah. unsatisfying. And this is incredibly satisfying. It's really nice. And now we can look at this book. Francis says... <gasps> By Professor yes. Hotchkiss! Oh, wow. It's been a minute since we've seen the good professor. Sweet as the smell of fried chicken, as Hotchkiss would always say. <laughs> oh, oh, and we can call her! Oh my god! Or someone. We don't know that that's her number. But it might be. Got it? Fact or fable? An overview. One of the most... I just disclaimer i know you know this but i do not ascribe like i'm not endorsing anything this text says i'm just reading it because the game is giving it to me to read that's all okay. One of the, i just i don't know what it's gonna say about culture whatever and yeah um, i just want to reiterate that one of the most ancient and widespread legends known to humankind can be summed up thusly Scattered over the earth are 13 humanoid skulls carved out of pure crystal. At some point in the future, fate will bring the 13 skulls together and they will speak, imparting wisdom that will save the human race from annihilation and usher in a golden era of peace and enlightenment. There are several versions of this legend. In one, the skulls were created by Mayans, Incans, or Aztecs, and collected form a repository of information detailing how and why humans came to be. Another legend credits their creation to the extraterrestrials terrestrials who seeded the earth with the human race and left the skulls behind, yeah, to explain their actions at some point in the future. Yet another contends the skulls are ancient in origin, but more important, that each skull is somehow magical in and of itself. The distinctive gifts they offer their owners reputedly include precognition, clairvoyance, telekinesis, and, of course, immortality. Some variations combine all of the above. Ooh, oh. What is both indisputable and intriguing about the general legend and its smaller, colorful variations is that several mysterious crystal skulls have indeed been discovered in the past millennium, turning up in all corners of the earth. What follows is an examination of everything that is currently known about these skulls in hopes of separating the facts of their existence from the fantasies of human imagination. The Whisperer. The first documented reference to the crystal skull known as the Whisperer came in 1532, shortly after Hernando de Soto helped Francisco Pizarro ambush and capture the Incan Emperor Atahualpa at the Battle of Cajamarca. De Soto's Ed de Camp while updating the De Soto's expedition records, noted that during Atahualpa's, I wish I could pronounce that better, and I don't know those pronunciation rules, I'm sorry. Um, subsequent imprisonment, De Soto befriended the Incan ruler. In time, Atahualpa told De Soto a secret. He possessed the exquisitely and exquisitely detailed life-sized human skull that the ancient ones had carved out of pure, clear crystal is some stained glass of that Incan emperor. He happened upon it at the hut of a deceased high priest whose astonishingly advanced age had caused his fellow priests out of fear and jealousy to slip him a fatal dose of poison. Ata wow. Walpa took a fancy to the skull and kept it and soon realized that the skull, which he contended would sometimes whisper to him in an unearthly voice using unfamiliar words, was giving him immunity to all human ailments. Wait, but not to poison like it didn't protect that deceased high priest from the okay maybe that's <laughs> not a human ailment it's like a external thing force yeah as long as he possessed the skull Arahualpa told de soto he would live forever but like the priest before him and like everyone who possessed this particular skull after him Atahualpa soon discovered that while the skull could perhaps protect him from the ravages of time and nature it was no match for the treachery of his fellow man mm hmm Pizarro had him executed. Um, 
oh, he seems to have inadvertently bequeathed the crystal skull to DeSoto. That sounds like some bullshit colonialism. Um, yeah. And the next mention comes in a it letter was a gift. written by a nobleman in the court of Philip II, 1556 ish. A crystalline head of death, which a manservant swore made utterances strange and low, too terrible for the ear to bear. Um, skull made its way to France and then back to America and then. <laughs> Texas? I love. I love the like created images in Nancy Drew games. Yeah. Uh, the photo to the right, found in the basement of a library in Jonesboro, Arkansas, suggests that by 1881, Otto Holpe's crystal skull had found itself in the hands of a traveling huckster who apparently used it to lure potential patrons to his wagon so he could sell them various balms and elixirs. If he is the same Curtis Caldwell who, according to census records, settled in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, he lived and worked to the ripe old age of 93 dying only when a dissatisfied customer set fire to his house in a fit of anger. If the whisperer was in Caldwell's house, sorry, I that was terrifying because for a second I thought that there was a crystal skull whispering to me. It was just Nancy's <laughs> voice making observations about what she was reading. It no doubt survived the fire, but exactly what happened to it next has proved impossible to discern, and its current whereabouts are is a mystery is, is a mystery I, whereabouts is i guess it's weird because whereabouts sounds plural but its current location is a mystery like yeah interesting but what is known about the skull's previous owners could prove very useful in solving that mystery for all the people who have possessed it have had two things in common they lived for an unusually long time and they always, without exception, met with death at the hand of another. In other words, the trail that leads to the discovery of this particular crystal skull will likely be one that begins with murder. Dun dun dun! So... <laughs> Emily says, whereabouts is that ding dang skull? And Ruby says, skull stat, check. Maybe Vampire's uncle had this skull. And was murdered for it. And was murdered for it. By whomst? Wow. Oh, okay. Let's check out that paper. Oh, oh yeah. I love this. This is like classic Nancy shit. Also, look at this beautiful little like border on this. Yeah, card. I want that stationery. It's lovely. Okay, have we seen letters that look like this before? Anywhere? I mean, in that they look kind of symboly, but that is I mean, definitely not symbols that we've seen so far in this game. Can you look at your picture of the book of, like, voodoo script that was... I, Yes, I will, although that stuff looked... that Those symbols looked very different. Also, I Graham know, is here. I know... Oh, hi. I know the ones that were on the wall were very different, but I'm just curious about the rest of the ones in, in the book itself. No, the, all of those, like, these look like letters with variations. All of uh -huh. those symbols are, like, purely geometric without, uh, without, the, without visible similarities to our lettering system. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's all of these. The rubbings. Which we have no idea what we're supposed to do with, right? And we still have paper and charcoal. Which is More weird. rubbings? I guess. Um, wow, like 15 minutes into the game part of a stream and we've already solved a very satisfying puzzle. Yeah, wow. Okay. Um, oh, wait, do you see? Hold on, go back to the shelf that we just put back together. 
Look, it's in a different, slightly different configuration. The green book on the uh, right, we have that at the bottom, not at the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we had it down here. Wow. We got it wrong. I'm kidding. We found Junior an alternate detective. solution. Emma's chanting teeth books. Nat asks, who the fuck stacks books like that, though? So, presumably, we have This is going to be an order puzzle. Pull these in a certain order. Yeah. But I don't know if it's like a... We have to find that order and just pull them all that way. Or if it's a, like, one of these books will stay up. No. I think... No, it's... I. Yeah, I think it's gonna be... And there are ones down here. I just don't oh know... The checklist says, like, figure out this. And I feel like we should be able to. But we don't seem to be able to. Like, we don't seem to have the information. No, we, we definitely don't have the information yet. But I want I want to, though. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> Did they think of that? That I wanted to have the information? Did you consider? <laughs> we still have spider puzzle, buzzard feathers, clock, skull box, marble game, crypt combo. Okay, let's look at... At the crypt, the the mini crypt. Okay. Um. Oh, the angles. No, that's not where I clicked. Oh, I forgot. I do this, and then I. That was just for fun. I have to go here. I have to drag it like this. Then I can click on this. Aha. Aha. What oh, so are... it's just it's just gotta be maybe there's an order from left to right. But I think it's just going to be what symbols are there actually. What symbols do we have? We have, we have those crossbones. We have worm and bird. Worm. We have coffin. a coffin. We have crossbones. Okay. So we have this combination. The, these four. Um, so maybe it is then supposed to, oh, oh, you know what? Look at the, there's the, oh, wait, we can, there's the pattern around the outside. So I think because there's, they're just four in order across the facade. So I wonder if they're just like left or right. Oh, everyone, everyone is doing the crocodile emote. We'll have to make sure to do that at, before we leave. Yeah, they... Uh, I'm confused. Like... I think we might have to go look at the order that they're actually on the crypt. Okay, but what are... Why are these arrows connected to the outside and these arrows connected to the inside? And why I... are these stripes thicker than those stripes and I don't I don't know that I would read into that I think they're just different decorative panels to help us distinguish okay I just how do we okay so what we'll have to do is we'll have to match We'll have to go look at it, and because we can see, we will be able to see the picture in the middle because it's just that weird texture, but we can tell the border. So we can be like, the first one has this decorative border, so we know it's the coffin. Oh, okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Yes. So what I would love is for you to take a picture of this Already and for done. us to also come up with words while we're both looking at it <laughs> to describe this. So this one has little flowers 
like five petaled okay, flowers. So bones equals little flowers. Yes. Um, I want to call the worm like Rococo or something. Uh, sure. I don't know if that's accurate, but I know that that's what you mean, so that's fine. The coffin is like medallion-y. It's medallions. medallions. And this one is sort of like wrought iron a little bit. Yeah, wrought iron. Got it. Let's go. Oh, Oops. don't forget the crocodile before we Oh, go. I will not. I think the chat will mute me. Sorry, I... Oh, oh. Wait, hold on. I just want to... Oh, we got a th oh, an eyeball or something out of there earlier. I forgot. Oh, Rose says, don't the rubbings have the frame? Y yes, the rubbings have the frame. The issue is order because we don't know. Oh, because the frame doesn't... Does the frame not move? The frame doesn't move. Okay, hold on. Just... Yes, let's properly enjoy the crocodile while we're here. The gator, sorry. Look at its little pink mouth when it opens. <coughs> Although, does it have a <coughs> tongue? Or are we looking <coughs> at its tongue? What? What is a gator's, Do gators have tongue tongues? situation? That's really distressing to think about. Hold on. What's a gator's tongue situation? <laughs> Graham says, I think they have they tongues. They have tongues. What are they like, though? Are they big? Um, like, are they most of their mouth big? Or yeah, they... it, it, yes, yes. We're, it almost looks, it, it like runs the entire width of the bottom of their mouth. Like, okay. the whole so length of their snout, too. we are seeing its tongue. Yeah. Asking okay. the important questions. Yeah. So we'll have to look at... Oh, yep. Okay. Yeah, so we have to look at the rubbings in our inventory. Okay. So worm, worm is wrought iron. is wrought iron. Check. Bird is rococo. Check. Um, coffin is medallions, which it already is. Which means bones is little flowers. So half of those are correct. Uh, yeah. I, I lost the... There's the bones. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm so Graham glad says, that boy can time. taste so much. <sighs> this should be crow. Worm. You have to put... Oh, um, I didn't realize this one had changed. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Oh, look at oh, that I key. love the whole roof hinges up. Yeah. Love that for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that that's the key to the crypt proper, right? Oh, probably. Uh, Ruby apparently is talking about making out with crocodiles. I mean, sounds like something Ruby would say. Yeah, and everyone is uh, asking Ruby to not. Yeah. Oh, frogs.
<gasps> what? I don't know how to... Oh! Look at that floor shine! Look at that floor shine! Look at that weird ceiling! Look at that spooky red light! Yeah, don't much like the ceiling texture. Wow, this sh sure is a crypt! I forgot that it wasn't just like a cool old church. There are, in fact, um, people. Yeah. Emma asks, who's been in here polishing? Huh. Oh. This must be the <gasps> painting that goes in that empty frame. Uh. <laughs> honestly, it's probably better for it yeah, not to, leave it here. <laughs> to be there. <laughs> Oh my god. What is going on? She's holding an umbrella very weirdly. Very weirdly. Also, I, yeah. I just have a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, okay. Is that it? Okay, can you... Do you want to write down or photograph this information because yeah, okay. there are four Hold of on. these we can look at and just in case they're relevant do you want to read them way? to me so i can write yes. and then just move on to marcel the next one? their last names are all bole so marcel yeah. 1826 oh, to 1890 okay fifi 1918 to 1981 okay marianne Okay. 1959 to 1990. Okay. And Claude, with an E, 1955 to 1990. So Claude and Marianne died in the same year. Yeah, but Marianne was four years younger. Which is not very... She was, what, 30 one yeah know. something yeah 31 and he was 35 huh. wait that that's henry's parents oh right obviously i would assume yes that makes sense Um, and I'm wondering if Fifi was, like, the uncle's wife, wife, but could have been a sibling. I don't know. But I guess we can't look at anything else, which is weird. We came all this way for that painting. I guess. Just want to make sure that I'm not, like, missing anything here, like... Okay, um, well, that was interesting. Crypt combo, check. Do you want to call Bess and check in? Well, we'll become Bess. Um, not until it's, I think, ready to Yeah, skip. like, 
we need to do something as best. Yeah. Right. Um, let's, I want to review this a minute. Um. Still have to do that. I'll bet the grandfather clock in the hallway, which has hands that move very easily, does more than keep time, which it does very badly. Find out Can't what. Check that off yet. Oh, we have to put the painting back. Yeah. Check. Oh, yeah. Still have to do that. I haven't played that game or haven't finished that game. All done. Have to figure out the feather position. Um. All done. Look for anything that might help me find out what happened to the skull that used to be in that box best found in the curio shop. All done? It's the crystal, it's the crystal skull. Right. I mean, I know, but we don't know what happened to it. Yeah. Uh, we are just now theorizing that, you know, the uncle was Bruno. Was his name Bruno? Was it Bruno? Bruno was yeah, murdered. Yeah, Bruno Bolet. And... Bruno D. Bolet. And the skull was stolen. Still have to do that. Didn't. Still have to. Oh, do that. right. We figured out what each of those symbols is, but we don't know what it means. All done. Right. Um, right. Well, like we know it's a. Her wall. This, yeah, but it's not letting yeah. me check it off. Yeah. <laughs> Did that. Did that. I haven't done that. Can't check that off yet. Ooh. I haven't done that. <sighs> okay. Okay. So let's let's put the painting back first and then we'll talk to the vampire. Yeah, sorry, I've lost track of I think the house what? to the right. Oh, I uh -oh. think you just passed it. I did. That's fine. We'll get there. It's confusing. I just want to check there. in. Oh, wow. Great. I understand that Dr. Bollet had some interesting pets, like an iguana. That man never met a creature he didn't like. He trained them to do all kinds of silly tricks, oh. then let them run free inside the house as well as out. Did he ever teach you how to make them do their tricks? I never cared to learn. Oh, do you think a, an animal, like a pet, Dr. is going to have to eat the spider? <laughs> Sometimes no. his activities made as much sense to me as bathing in a bayou full of gators. Oh, because there's the like strings to pluck. Yeah. That's right. But I do think that it might be like Isis the wolf where like one of the animal's tricks might help us do something and we have to figure out how to make it do that thing. Did Dr. Bollet yeah. ever say anything to you about a crystal skull? He may have referred to it as the whisperer. No, he never so much as mentioned a crystal skull, whispering or otherwise. Hmm. Nice talking to you. I Thanks cannot overstate back. how much I love this little like sheltered garden with the I, trellis. I want to be there walls, so badly. Like with sheltered my with the l lantern light and all the little cards. It's so good. It's, it's very cute. Okay, maybe now we can ask Vampire Man because we read the book mm. yes how did Bruno die if you don't mind my asking just dropped dead in the front hallway I mean the guy was 95 years old here check it out myocardial infarction that's doctor speak for heart attack Attending physician, Dr. Gilbert oh. Buford, 504-555-9970. Was that Bruno's doctor? And his best well, don't friend, click away. Yeah, so I'm told. I've never met him. Interesting keychain. Oh, shoot. That's one of Uncle Bruno's yeah. I'm sure it'll give it to us. It's the one he was wearing when he died. How nice. Anything else? I'll check back with you later. Awesome. Oh, we also, we can call the doctor and we can also call oh, the number yeah. that was in the professor's yes. book. Um, did, did we notice the that the, an autopsy was not performed? It oh, said on the death certificate. Oh, oh, uh, 
Emma points out it was Krollmeister Crematorium. Oh, yes! Check. Krollmeister. That's grim. Ruby, Krollmeister also makes um, toaster ovens and ham radios, probably, and just, like, every, every, like, equipment that we've ever encountered in a Nancy game has been made by Krollmeister. They made the lab, they made the laboratory equipment in, um, the museum Scar game. Hand. Yeah. Um, okay, what are we doing now? Painting and phone calls? Mm-hmm. Mm. Also, there was that little bookcase to the left of Henry that I don't think we'd been able to look at closer we before, but it's... still can't. Mm, okay. What an upsetting series of portraits. Horrible. Do you think these are supposed to... T oh. Oh... Hmm. What? <laughs> Maybe chronological order. Well, okay, so they each have, like, a prop. Right? Like, axe, toothbrush, banana, fan, dog, umbrella, lollipop, monkey, hat, I mm -hmm. guess. I'm, a, I'm guessing those props need to be in a certain order. Okay, yeah. I don't know why, but it just feels... But I don't know for sure what, like... Like, does... Is this dog? Is it D for dog? Or is it P for poodle? We we don't we do not have enough information yet. We'll we'll get there. Let's make phone calls. Okay. Okay. I am she, Nancy Drew. Your name has a ring to it. Do I know you? Yes, as a matter of fact, we met a little while back in Wisconsin. Oh, yes, you were the delightful <laughs> young lady doling out the samples in the tasting room of that I want <laughs> cheese samples? Uh, no, I met you at Whitford Castle. That's ridiculous. There was no cheese <laughs> That's great, oh no, my god. We were both guests there. I found a journal written by Marie Antoinette, which you translated. Remember? Thanks to you, suddenly all I can think about is how wonderful a nice big slab of Colby cheese would taste right now. Listen, Mandy, I'm on a deadline, so if you could please just tell me why you called. <sighs> but my name is... Brutal. Let's cut to the chase, shall we? Chop, chop. Did a man from New Orleans named Bruno Boulet ever call you? I'm like Nancy Drew. I'm a scholar of French history, you know. Yes, I know. <laughs> so did Bruno Bollet call you? Indeed he did. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Uh why? Yeah. Why did he call? If you don't mind my asking. Because he had read my book, of course. The Crystal Skull. Fact or fable. One of my best efforts. Sold like hotcakes, smothered in a rich, tangy lemon sauce. <laughs> oh, what she's do you great. Think? Maybe the top one. Let's cut to the chase. Did he say anything about owning one of the skulls himself? I would have hung up on him straight away if he had. I tell you, Brandy, if I had a dollar for every crackpot who's called claiming to own one of those skulls, I'd be able to dine at the Russian tea room every evening for the rest of my life. All right, that's a bit of hyperbole, but you get the picture. No. If memory serves, we talk. 
talked mostly about the skull called the Whisperer. He wanted to know if I had learned any more about it since my book was published, which I hadn't, or if I had any theory as to what happened to it, which I didn't. And that was the extent of your conversation? Well, now, let me think. My, my, such insatiable curiosity, Nelly. You remind me of someone <laughs> I encountered on one of my journeys. For the life of me, I cannot remember her name or the circumstances. Nancy Drew? Wickford Castle? Ah! The Eye <laughs> I'm sorry? That's what Bruno Bollet said when I turned the tables and asked him if he had any idea where the Whisperer was. He said, the eyes have it. Then he chuckled. Oh, the eyes out. have it. Joey, it's the eyes. Yeah. The eyeballs. Yeah. Oh, God. This is so many questions. Oh. Um, if someone found a skull made of crystal, how could they be sure it's one of the crystal skulls? Wonderful question, Francie. How indeed? Because there are sure to be thousands of fakes out there, perhaps tens of thousands. <laughs> tens of thousands of fake skulls crystal skulls. Oh, God. Oh my god. <sighs> Modern day tools would have left marks if the skull was a fake? Exactly so. Mind you, the marks on a good fake would be microscopic and thus imperceptible to the human eye. However, any thorough laboratory analysis would quickly unmask. How do you think they were made originally so the only then? Way to prove that a skull is the real deal is by None proving it's not a fake. Sense. would a crystal skull like the Whisperer be worth? In this crazy day and age, where the short hair and used tissues of celebrities get sold for okay. thousands of dollars, there's absolutely no telling, Candy. A half million dollars easily. Maybe even a million. Maybe two. Maybe ten. The sky's the limit. Cha-ching, cha-ching. The idea that the Whisperer can make its owner immortal, do you believe that? I believe Does that mean there are mysterious external forces at work in the universe of which we do not and cannot ever have full knowledge? Or does it all boil down to us? If the human heart desperately wants something to be true, does the human mind have the power to make it true? Who knows? Oh, questions, questions, questions. Oh, how dreary life would be without them. In your book, you said that all the people who've ever owned the Whisperer were murdered, yet Bruno Bollet dropped dead of a heart attack. Are you saying the Whisperer was in his possession after all? The scallywag! Why didn't he tell me that? Oh, that's right, I would have hung up on him. Well, if that's the case, then I strongly suggest you take a close look at his so-called heart attack, Sandy, because if he owned the skull and he died, I guarantee it was at the hands of someone else. Or oh, my name's not Beatrice Gertrude Winifred Hotchkiss. Thanks for your help. Toodaloo! Here's the thing. There was no autopsy, and also he was cremated. Yeah. Hmm. Gilbert Buford's answering service. How may I help you? I need to talk to Dr. Buford. Could you maybe give me a number where I can reach him? No, ma'am, I cannot. Is this an emergency? Sort of. I mean, it's not a medical emergency. I just... 
see, I'm only going to be in town for a short time, and Dr. Buford and I have this mutual friend who died recently, and I just really need to talk to him about it. Need some consoling, huh? Nancy's yes, definition I of mutual friend is very exactly. flexible. Very loose. <laughs> well, tell you what, it's against the rules to give you his phone number, but I can tell you that now that he's all but retired, Dr. Buford spends most of his evenings at his favorite gumbo stand down in so the Now Brandon we're going to become best. If you really best. need to talk to him, you can probably find him there. Great. Do you know the address? It's at the corner of Rampart and Domain. Did you say Rampart and Domain? I did indeed. Granny Pumpkin's Cajun cooking. They make some darn fine gumbo. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome, and uh, I'm truly sorry about your loss. My loss? That mutual <laughs> friend of yours and Dr. Buford? Nancy. Oh, right. Come on. You, that's very kind of you. Bye. And this says, I wish Beatrice were the main character of this game. Yeah, Beatrice is and great. And Francis, Francis says, wow, yes, please tell Bess to go interrogate the old man whose friend died. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Um. I... Well, we can check a few of these All off. Done. Did that. Did that. I haven't done that. Uh, so we still have tooth books, clock, mobile game. Spider puzzle, buzzard feathers, skull box. Well, not skull box. Did did you finally cross it off? Did yeah. Did it let us? Okay. Symbols great. in Renee's room. Okay. Uh, the the symbols or letters on that card, that piece of paper, and then Bess talking to Gilbert Buford. The spider, by the way, is not on the task list yet. But so we will get there will eventually. Be. But yes, um, yeah. I here's the thing. So like, Bess is like the obvious thing. Like we know how to do this. All of the rest of these, I feel stuck on right now. Yeah, I I kind of think we should maybe just end a few minutes. You know, we're like I ten mean, minutes it's, short. Yeah, it's and it's that time. start with the concrete thing next time because I well, like having a thing to start with. Yeah, the only other thing is I was gonna suggest that we call Ned. Yeah, totally. We could do that before we end tonight, um, and maybe he'll give us some help. Hello, Nancy. Hey, Ned. It's about time you called. Did you make it to New Orleans okay? Yep. Have you seen Henry? <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm not sure I like the way you said that. Is he okay? He's fine. Well, he's the executor of his great uncle Bruno's estate, which he's not real happy about. But he and his great uncle weren't that close, so he's not grief stricken or anything. Well, then, are you okay? Other than being attacked on my way into Henry's house by a skeleton wearing a red ascot and getting knocked out by the smoke bomb he threw at me, I'm fine too. What? Let's just say that I've stumbled onto a mystery. The relationship is so weird. Why am I not surprised? Is Bess with you? No, but she has been helping me. So tell me about this skeleton man. Well, it was someone in a costume, obviously. He or she was leaning over something in the great room when I walked in and surprised them. So they threw a smoke bomb at you and ran? Yeah, I must have interrupted whatever they were doing. What were they leaning over? A scale model of the cemetery next door. Henry says his great uncle Bruno made it so he could keep track of who was buried there. Apparently Bruno used to oversee the cemetery. And right near the scale model, I found a tracing of some kind of symbol. I'm thinking maybe Skeleton Man dropped it. Why would Skeleton Man be interested in the scale model of a cemetery? 
good question. Maybe I'll take a real good look around in there and see if I can find out. Good idea. Um, I do kind of want to ask this, but I also want to hint, like so I'm going to do that first. Be my pleasure. Um, oh man, I, I want to know both of these things. I have a feeling the meetings in the great room need to be arranged a certain way. Any idea what that certain way is? Remember that bookmarker you found in the book about the crystal skulls? We'll take a uh, good look at the painting and see if something in each painting... Oh, I bet you're right. Card. If so, you'll be on your way. Because there's like, there's yeah. like a T and an M. Yeah. Excellent. Thanks for the advice. No big deal. See ya. Oh, 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 oh. oh no. Let's ask him the other question before the hint this time, okay. too. Yeah, I didn't know hey, that Nancy, it would kick us going? out like that. Yeah, I didn't either. Meaning... I'm still trying to figure out how you got to be friends with Henry. Eyeballs. Well, we're not <laughs> best friends or anything. Heck, we're not really even friends. I just feel sorry for the guy. I mean, he never hangs out with anyone between classes. And when I'd heard there'd been a death in the family, I just wanted to make sure he was okay all by himself down there. Don't worry, he's fine. Although I think he misses his parents a lot. I saw him out in the cemetery by what I think is their crypt. He seemed pretty upset. I'm not surprised. I get the feeling that what Henry looks like on the outside is just the oh. opposite of what he looks like on the inside. What? You know, Do you know what his insides look like, Ned? Yeah, I know. Also, like, what is Ned's perception of what he looks like on the outside? Like, oh, I just unplugged my headphones accidentally. Oh, yikes. Um, that's... What happened? Sorry, my headphone jack, just like part of it came out. Okay. Oh dear, this is so bad. Uh, hold on. Do we need to end? Okay, it's, we're fine. We're fine. We're good. Okay, just tuck it back in just, there, I guess. Just, you know, pieces of my computer falling off. Um, it's fine. Uh. I hope we're not a two for two on headphone jacks in 2020 between yeah. the two of us. I just like, does Ned think that the way he dresses is supposed to look tough? So like he looks tough on the inside, oh, but buddy. he's really emotional on the oh, inside or on the outside, but Dad. he's really emotional on the inside because that's not. Mm -hmm. Oh no, more questions. I mean, we can always call him back next time yeah, if we okay. want to, and we'll have those questions. You bet. When it comes to those buzzard statues in the garden, I know I'm probably supposed to make the feathers of that one buzzard form a certain pattern. But how am I supposed to know what that pattern is? Keep your eyes peeled for a book which Bruno Bollet wrote, and once you find it, pay close attention to what he has to say about statues and keys. Oh. Sounds okay. good. Thanks. You need anything else? Just call. Okay, so we just don't have the info yet on that, but we no, will I don't at some so. point. We can't look at that cabinet, can we? No. So we have several things to solve next time. Yeah. Um. <laughs> to solve next time, right? Uh, we have like six minutes. I I okay. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, we don't have to. No, it's okay. I understand. The question is... Are these props? Or are they... Yeah, because... Okay, U for umbrella. M for monkey. M for monkey. T for toothbrush. A for axe. T for toothbrush. F for fan. Let me take a picture of this. Okay. Um, I've got a picture okay. if we Here. want to. So, T for toothbrush. Toothbrush. B. Banana. F for fan. M for monkey. K. 
Okay. L, I'm guessing for lapdog. Or lollipop. Or lollipop. H for hat. Yes. And then A for axe. And then P for, for poodle or puppy. Oh! 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 That's a spy oh, hole. Oh, peephole. We've... That's another thing to go on the next round <gasps> of Nancy Bingo. Okay. We're not Can you adjust anything. it with the thing on the right? Oh. <gasps> oh, that's... Eye of the Beholder. That's Bruno's book. I bet you money. This is something ice up there, though, so... Yeah, maybe... Do you see... Do you see down that's here, though, like above the horse's thing, knee, B-R... That's or maybe... Beholder. That's it's oh, the same beholder. title. Okay. Um, well, regardless, we should go look at that book. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Fascinating. Thought we were gonna be trapped for a second there. Um, what, wait, wasn't there stairs? No. No, it's a step stool. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Come on. <gasps> yeah. Break here. You never said anything about that. Well, how was I supposed to know? I mean, what am I, telepathic? No, no, come on. Don't get upset. Look, I'll, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, okay? What do you mean, something else? You gotta be kidding me, Summer. I don't have that kind of money. No, no, I meant I don't have it now, but I will soon, okay? Bye. Oh, man. Hmm. Was that Henry? Yeah. Is he a terrible man after all? Oh, another locked door. <gasps> oh, the spider key. Oh, okay, hold on, look, wait, hold on. Yeah, see, look, it's... You can see Order. like one, two, three, yeah. four, I've got a picture. five, six, seven, eight. Yes. Okay. Okay. Things are coming together. Things are coming together. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you all for tuning in. And join us in the Discord for a call after this. Um, I am Joey. You can find me on Twitter at LemFaro. Caitlin, where Big can change. people find you? You can find me on Twitter at Chalo. And behold, you can find us on Twitter at Detectives. And the YouTube archives are up to date. So if you need to revisit or have missed anything, it's all there for your perusal. Hell yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye.